Okay, he and I were introduced um, through a colleague of mine. He's actually based out of Seattle, which I wasn't sure if you all were familiar or aware of. Um, so he spoke for our sister club there, Tower Club, and it was a resounding success. Uh, and then I actually reached out to them and said, hey, who is this guy? How can I get him? I keep hearing good things about him. I Googled his website, was really impressed um, with some of the other speaking engagements he'd had and just really his passion spoke to me. I think he and I did a Zoom call and immediately connected over, over shared passions and passion projects. So um, you guys are in for a treat today. I'm really, really excited about this presentation. I personally am going to be taking notes and would encourage you to do the same. So David, it is all yours. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for that. And yes, I mentioned, uh, just so you have it ready, you may want to take some notes, but you do need at least a piece of paper and a pen and your cell phone. And for those that are on the screen, I ask people to, to high five when I ask to make sure everybody's getting something. So have your high five screen ready. And for those of you that aren't on the screen, uh, maybe you can just thumbs up and we'll, we'll get it from the vibe. But let me start out with a um, video I have as kind of an introduction video, which will kind of tell you a little bit about me and explain how and why I got into gratitude. So I'll kick it off with this and then we'll get going. David, will you turn it up just a little bit for us? David draws from his own experiences Better. learning to pilot a private plane, jumping out of planes, becoming a national champion hydroplane driver, flying off of cliffs, and leaping over bridges, all to test what he himself was made of. Ultimately, he considers his greatest achievement as being the very proud father of what he calls his rock star son. David Brooke knew from as early as 19 years of age that he wanted to become a speaker to help inspire and motivate others. That drive became a passion to champion and illustrate the immense power of a gratitude mindset. With over 1,000 videos posted on YouTube and an equal 1,000 subscribers to his channel, that gratitude guy has become a leading influencer in transforming people's lives. His stories are terrific, very relevant. Relatable. You inspired a room full of people with developmental disabilities and their families. David now travels the world speaking about gratitude and just recently completed a national coast to coast tour. One of those events boasted the attention of 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. Now an international best selling author, David's written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal and six word lessons to embrace gratitude. Studies have shown that when practicing an attitude of gratitude, people experience less aches and pains. Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals who are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence and better relationships. So if better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health sound good to you, then you'll want to pay close attention to what mm -hmm. you're about to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome that gratitude guy. David George Brooks. So there you go. So that's kind of my story. So as I mentioned too, this, I do a lot of Zooms. I was talking to Anna earlier today and I do, gosh, two or three a week or two or three a day, I should say. Some are clients, some are presentations and so forth and some are just personal, but you get very used to the Zoom platform. And so uh, but it, I tell people, so this is a very interactive talk. And as I say, if you're on the screen, you want to ask for a high five, if you can do that. If you're not on the screen, just hopefully you're getting it and you can hear clearly and that type of thing. But as I say, it's very interactive and it's not like act like you're interested, but hopefully do. There's a number of exercises, probably four or five, and they're all designed to get you to think about how gratitude is going to be in your life. And I will tell you, as I've done this speaking now for the last eight or 10 years, I used to start a lot of my talks with the tragedies that had happened to me from losing my parents when I was younger. My mom died of uh, uh, cancer. My father committed suicide. My wife died when my sons were four years old and 14 years old and a number of friends. And I just I'd experienced a lot of loss. And I used to go into a lot more detail and I don't now, but I just suffice it to say that I wanted to find something that was going to help me to deal with this loss. We've all known people. I can see it's neat to see all the names, Nance, Brianna, Mike, 
Dale, Mark, Alex, Travis, Laney. You could go to every single one of us, and I bet you we could have enough things that were really tough in our life. That some tragedies, some setbacks, and things like this, especially once you've achieved four or five or six years or six decades rather on this planet. So to me, it was kind of how you were going to cope with these types of things and gratitude came along. But before gratitude came along, uh, the first thing that I realized is it really depends on how you look at something. We've all known people, you've heard it over and over again, the glass half full, half empty. I do a thing where people are in person, and they do their hand like this, is it going clockwise or counterclockwise? The hand never changes, but when you view it from up or down, it's clockwise versus counterclockwise. It's your choice. I'm very adamant about people that say that, you know, you, you don't understand. I go, no, 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 don't say you don't understand because I know an excuse is coming. It's your choice when you get out of bed every day to go left or right, up or down. I unfortunately, my father took his own life and he was one of these, I'm one of the most positive people you're gonna meet. He was one of the most negative. And I'd say, good morning. He'd go, what's good about it? And I thought, I just can't imagine having that type of attitude. And I'd say, you know, it's, it's sunny out. It happens to be sunny today in Seattle. It's really nice. He'd go, it's gonna rain tomorrow. And he always figured out a way to get some sort of negative thing on it. So it does depend on how you look at it. And I was, I, I use as an example, I was running a foot race over in Medina in uh, east of Seattle where all Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and all those guys live. And then there's a floating bridge that comes across to Seattle and there's right University of Washington the Husky Stadium is right on the water as the bridge enters into Seattle. And I was running a foot race and I came across, started in Medina, came across the floating bridge and went all the way into Husky Stadium was the finishing line and I was about halfway through and I was just struggling and there's all these people in front of me and I, I just was it was raining and I wasn't doing well and I thought I had trained and then I thought you know what maybe I should look behind me which is difficult to do when you're running but as I tried to run and look behind me thousands of people all the way up the bridge way up into Medina where all those people live and I thought wow I'm you know actually farther ahead so I turned around and I realized at that very moment if right where I was, if all those people in front of me weren't here today, I would be in first place. I mean, what if all those people had just decided, I'm not going to the race today, honey. We're not going. We're not going to go do the foot race. Foot race. And then guess who would be in first place? It would be me. And so it just depends on how you look at something. And gratitude does just a great, great example of helping you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. I will probably say it five times throughout the next 45 minutes. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. And it's so important to understand gratitude turns and focuses you and, and focuses you on what you have and it turns it into enough versus the cat chasing its tail. So here's an example, coronavirus, COVID-19. We've got all this nonsense that started. It's been terrible. There's been a lot of bad things, a lot of negative press. It all was roughly March 15th, I'd say it was around the middle of March is when it happened. So I wrote down the silver linings of coronavirus because somebody came up to me at a talk and they went, okay, Mr. Gratitude guy, what, you're so positive, you're so optimistic. What's, what is there good about coronavirus? And so I wrote it down and I thought, look at this technology with all our computers and the internet. They talked about bandwidth, made a big difference. There was an article about New York City. If it wasn't for the bandwidth that could handle all the Zoom calls and things like this, people wouldn't be working from home. But the communication alone, just look at Zoom. Zoom is crazy. I mean, it's just like whoever thought of this. And I have family meetings now and friend meetings and, and this time that we've spent with our family and friends and the kids that are home from school, not necessarily the best thing, but then families are spending all this time that they're going to remember forever, the summer or the spring and summer of 2020 when they were together. The science is crazy. There'll probably be a vaccine soon. There's family dinner time. I'm old enough to remember family dinners when we'd all sit there together and nobody did that anymore. And all these things we did in person face-to-face -face hugs, handshakes, smiles, things like that. You appreciate that more. The efficiency is crazy. I would drive an hour to meet with a guy. The guy that did that video, that my introduction video, I would drive an hour to see him spend an hour at Starbucks and an hour back to my house. Now we talk about it on Zoom and it's one hour and I've picked up two extra hours. I never had before because I spent going through traffic. And the conveniences, I haven't been in a grocery store in four or five months and I get Amazon Fresh on the front porch and it just makes it so handy and all these apps and so forth. And then this community about being in it together. And lastly, embracing gratitude, I think helps you to realign your priorities. 
because it makes you really see what's important. And I think it, it, it just is something that you line these things up and something that didn't seem such a big deal is, and something that was a big deal is no longer that important in the big scheme of things. So I think it's really important. So first exercise, I wanted to get a little bit of a focus on how you see yourself and what focus you have on that person in the mirror. So take out a piece of paper, and a pen, and I used to do this in pairs, but now I do this individually, and this is called the you are exercise. So at the top of the piece of paper, write two words, you are, Y-O-U-A-R-E. And now what I want you to do, and I'm gonna give you about 30 to 45 seconds on this. I want you to pretend you are your mother or your father, your best friend or your biggest cheerleader. I want you to take it from their vantage point and I want you in 30 to 60 seconds, write as many things as you can to describe you, that that biggest cheerleader or mom or dad, you are talented, you are energetic, you are accomplished, whatever it is, how that biggest cheerleader would see you, write as many things as you can. I'll give you about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And I'm sure you could write many more things, but uh, that's what I miss about sometimes with the in-person stuff is I'll look out in the audience, here's somebody just staring at me. You couldn't think of any more things? That was it? You just came up with one or two things, apparently? And they just look at you. It's just always great to connect with the audience. But anyway, uh, okay, so here's what I want you to do. Again, very personal, just the two of you, you and the person you see in the mirror. I want you to, now you've written that down, that took you 30 or 40 seconds. It's going to take you five or 10 seconds to reread those things again. I want you to reread those things again. And as you read those characteristics, your biggest cheerleader, mother, father, or best friend would say about you, I want you to give me a high five if you feel better after you read all those things. So just give me a high five and, and I'll just trust the people that are, look at all those high fives there. Thank you. Mike, good job. Dale, Brianna, Nance, and I can't tell with Mark and Travis and the rest of these people. I'm hoping it's all a high five. So as I like to say, hold on. That was easy. Yes, it was. Because, you know, it's easy because that's how you change your, your imprint or that view you see of yourself. When I do this in person, I pair them up and I give them two people. So it's, it's Nance and me. And so we, we, we pair off, even if we've never met each other. And I take these little three by five cards like these and I have it how I see the person. They say, well, I've never met you before. It doesn't matter. I can say, hi, Nance, I'm David Brooke. Nice to meet you. And we shake hands and we do it just looking at her and you get this vibration. And when you see how somebody see, feels about you about that, you realize, why are we so hard on ourselves? I don't understand it. I don't understand why we just beat the you know what out of ourselves. And you look at how that made you feel. Every single person, I think Travis and Lainey and Mark and who's the other one there? Jeannie, uh, Alex, all those all probably felt the same way. You feel better. Well, that's what a gratitude mindset will do for you. Because what is it doing? It's focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. So it makes such a big difference. I will never understand why we are hard on ourselves, as I just said. There was a long time. I had a very interesting career. You saw some things. I owned my own airplane. I learned how to fly, skydiving, bungee jumping, all these crazy things, national champion, hydroplane driver. I did all that kind of stuff. And yet I will tell you on a regular basis, I would call myself a word that I won't even say anymore. In fact, I'll spell it, but I won't say it anymore because I stopped about 10 or 15 years ago. And the word was L-O-S-E-R. And it hit me one day and I thought, if you can't advocate for yourself, just you, Who's going to advocate for you? You know, maybe the biggest cheerleader, maybe your mom or dad, possibly. But beyond that, that's what gratitude does. It helps you to, again, focus on the things that you have. And it, again, why we're so hard on ourselves, I'll never, ever get. But it's just one of those things. So keep that in mind. And then we're going to talk about a gratitude journal a little bit. And that's going to focus on it even more. 
I talk about gratitude's power and what it can do for you. And part of the aspect of this is, is you just, you can't give up in, uh, under any circumstances. And you've heard that before, but I think of so many examples in my life of not giving up. When my wife passed away, she was 38 years old. The boys were four and 14 and both of them struggled mightily, but especially my four-year-old, Connor, who's now 26. And at the time, a few years after that, he wanted to play baseball. And he could he couldn't it was just it was amazing he, I would he would do the tee they do tee ball and they put the tee on the ball and he'd be swinging way up here and finally I'd go no Connor he kept looking at me Dad well, am I supposed to hit the ball yes hit the ball on the tee and the coach would be there and he'd finally lower it way down he'd hit the tee and the ball would fall off and he'd go Dad I got a hit and I go no Connor it's not the way it is it's, you're supposed to hit the ball but he kept trying he went through all the levels and so forth but he never played. He just never played. And, but he always went out and I take him out to practices, the batting cages, to the, the pickup stuff, all that kind of stuff. And he kept playing for nine or 10 years. It went from when he was about five or six when he started to play all the way up to about 11, 12 years old. And we get to a game and I think it was May 31st, 2000 and 2005. I have to think about the, my, my, the date here. And I'm sitting in the stands. He's never played. And so they're in a game and it's the bottom of the seventh. They play seven innings and it's the bottom of the seventh and they're behind seven to six and they have two guys on base, second and third and two outs and they're out of players. And so the coach goes, is there anybody left in the dugout? And the assistant coach goes, yeah, Brooks down here. And so he goes, well, send them out. So he sends out Connor and Connor is swinging the bat, like just swinging it like crazy as I hit my mic. And looking like he's Ken Griffey Jr., you know, he's never even played for gosh sakes. And so I'm in the stands. I'm doing the only thing I think is possible. Please, a bunt, just like a bunt. Maybe he could just get hit by a pitch. How about that? You know, and so he gets up to the plate, ball one, strike one, ball two, strike, full count. And so there's guys in second and third. They're behind seven to six, bottom of the seventh, two out. And he rips this ball in the left field. It goes just inside the bag on third. The guy from third comes in and scores. The guy from second rounds third and comes in. Here comes the ball. The catcher catches it. The guy comes at the plate at the same time. He had originally been on second. He's now at home. They crash together and the ball pops out. And they win the game eight to seven. And I look out on second base. Here's Connor just standing like this. And, I can, and he yells to me from the stands, dad, I got a hit. And I went, Oh my gosh. And he's sitting there. And then the whole uh, rest of the players come out of the dugout, put them on their shoulders and carry them off the field. And they win the game eight to seven. And when we got home that night, he said, you know, Connor, it was never, ever about baseball. It's never, even this has been a 10 year journey. It was about the fact you just can't quit. You know, you just can't give up on anything. He went on to be student of the year because he had learning disabilities after Dana had passed away. And he went on to be the number one leadoff hitter in the baseball team and the best hitter on the team five and six years later. So it just goes to show everybody has a million stories like that, but it's so important. You just cannot give up in any circumstances. And I noticed that if you give up on something, you notice it's sitting over in the corner of the room going, Travis, I'm still here. Anna. I'm, I'm still here. I'm your problem. I got to, you got to deal with me. But if you deal with it and if you use a gratitude mindset to focus on the good things that can happen, it'll all get solved and stuff. So by the way, in the chat, if you would do me a favor, put what has your, been your best coping mechanism through this pandemic? Just type in something, the one or two things that has maybe helped you more than anything else. As I said, it's easy to talk about the negativity things, but what is something that's, that's really helped you to deal with this and maybe de-stress you? Dale says, family, boy, that is really true. Nance, meditation and exercise, those, that's a two-pronged two prong power punch. I'll tell you, my meditation is so good, exercise. One of the things I'm going to suggest, too, speaking of, as Nance put that in there, is exercise. Travis, activities with family, breathing exercises, excellent, Travis. Yep, that's really, really good. And Nance mentioned exercise. And I'm going to suggest that you do something, which I think is really cool, is gratitude is such a powerful emotion. And if you mix it with exercise, you have kind of a two-headed monster, if you will. It's just so powerful. I have gotten in the habit of taking a 10,000 step. I've now moved it up to 12, 15,000. Even yesterday, I did 20,000 step. Daily gratitude walk. You go out and you do your exercise. You do your 10 to 12,000 steps, hopefully minimum of 10 they talk about. And then focus on one thing you're grateful for. 
and do that every day and make yourself that pack. That'll really, really help you when you pair those two together. So what's Jeannie say? Blocking time to stay on track. Yep. And Zooming with friends and family. There again, Zooming, Zoom is just so powerful. Working out and, re and uh, reading, Brianna says. Lainey says, exercise. Yep. Exercise has helped me too, Alex. And from and uh, better communication with family and friends, really you have a network that loves you. Yes, those are great, great things. So keep focusing on those things. And if whoever said that the glass is half full, I still talk about that, that if you can focus on that, you're always going to meet some negative people. Like I mentioned, my father is an example, but it's so important. Now I want to talk to you about next about the science of gratitude. This is something that was a little bit in my intro but I want to just kind of not so much prove to you, but just show, show you this isn't just some mindset. There's all this research that's been done. So as you can tell, I talk pretty fast. And so I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. In fact, somebody said the other day, you really talk fast. And I, I go, can you slow down? I said, no, I can't slow down. But really, you talk so fast. Like, okay, how about this? Hi, I'm the gratitude guy. Today, I have the science of gratitude. This is interesting. I think you're going to find, yeah, it wouldn't work. Anyway, the science of gratitude, science of gratitude study. Here's some of the studies and the research that's come out. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Depression, anxiety, big time things that have come out of this pandemic as well. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. That is such a powerful uh, statement. People, I'm going to get that boat. I'm going to get that mountain cab. I'm going to get the new car. They're always pursuing things they don't have, and they don't appreciate what they have. As, they, as we said, that's what gratitude does for you because, after all, what? Gratitude turns what we have into enough. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for when the circumstances of life become unpleasant. Look at coronavirus, perfect example. I mentioned to Anna, first, when this first happened, I lost a whole bunch of paid speeches and I was bummed and it took me about a week or two to just get my mind set and thought, I'll get those speeches later. I'll do them on Zoom. We'll, we'll push them to 2021. But hey, guess what? Connor, my old, my younger son, Kyle, my older son, myself, we're all healthy. There's a lot of good things. So it's easy to lose sight of that. And what does gratitude do? It brings it back into focus for you. And this is, this is something that has to do with that exercise that you just did. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continually compare ourselves to others crazy. Done it my whole life. I try not to do it. It's like a cat chasing its tail. You're never going to catch the tail if you continually compare yourself to others. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, and, and, and the less anxiety, rather, it'll help your health, your body, and your progress, and the less anxiety you will experience. So there's some of the things about the science, which is really interesting. So, okay, next, ex next assignment. Now, I'm going to give you about, I'll give you 60 seconds on this one. And I want you to think about this for a minute. And it doesn't matter if this is personal, professional, wherever. I want you, I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and I want you to write down as fast as you can the most memorable events of your life that you can think of. Could be personal, could be professional, could be work, could be family, could be children. doesn't matter what, it could be trips, I don't care. But just, and try to do it in priority, the most memorable events of your life. Whatever those are, write those down. I'll give you 60 seconds this time. Go.
Okay, and stop. So I wanted you to get started on this, but this is going to require some homework. So today is Tuesday, August 25th. So maybe by this weekend, I want you to finish that list. And I want you to do two things when you have time. This is, again, just for you and the person you see in the mirror. And I want you to fill that list out to one of three numbers, either 25 things, 50 things, or 100 things. And try to put it in priority, and not try, absolutely put it in priority, whatever is the most important. And I want you to promise me you'll finish that by Saturday. Can I get a high five on that, that you'll do it for me? Thank you. <laughs> Hold on a second. I just have to do Dale's high five. This is just... <laughs> Thank you, Dale. <laughs> That's good. Here's the reason I want you to do that. So I'm having a time. The reason I added this about the science of gratitude, again, is how your mindset can shift when you do certain things. And we're going to talk about the gratitude journal next. Is that I started thinking, well, I haven't even been to Europe, but I've done all these crazy things in my life. And I haven't been doing it. I started thinking about all the things I hadn't done. And I thought, wait a second. Why don't you take some time? And I did it over the course of two or three days, which is why I'm giving you some time to do it. And I wrote down, I went out to 100 things. And number one was the birth of my son, Connor. Number two was my son, Kyle. And then it went on down line. I think in the top 10, one of them was speaking to 10,000 soldiers. I spoke at at Joint Base Lewis McCord up here in Seattle. Anyway, and then I prioritized and I put it on a Word doc or an Excel, I forget, and put it through. And I'm telling you, every time you're not feeling good about your life, you look at that list, it'll change. And you will realize how many things that you've done. That's the same impact of gratitude. Gratitude is, again, such an aspect of focusing on what you have. And the people that focus on what they don't have, I focus on the abundance. They focus on the lack. I don't get it. But it'll help you to do that. So promise me we already did. Thank you for that. And do that by this weekend. And you can make it 25. You can make it 50 or 100. But whatever it is, make sure you're doing it. If you're having a bad day, if you're having a tough time, it'll make such a big difference. And a lot of what I try to get people to think about is how do you shift your mindset? You know, it's just, it's so important. I'm going to do a we're going to do this gratitude journal next. Then it's find yourself, your passion, your purpose. And this relationship you have with yourself is so critically important. I maintain it's maybe the most important relationship you have in your life. People that are very spiritual, maybe it's their creator. That's fine, but it's right up there. It's either first or second. And how do you reinforce that relationship all the time with that nice person you see when you're brushing your teeth? So next up. Just keep moving along here. The Gratitude Journal. Now, this is the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I'll, I'm going to actually, in a minute, I'll cut and paste my um, contact information into the chat so you have it. You can click on, you can buy it at Amazon. It's $15. But you can get a spiral notebook too, as far as I'm concerned. Whatever you do, this is really the key to why this is so important. So why is a journal so important compared to just, but David, I'm grateful I'm, I knew Anna Chafin. I'm grateful I did this and that. Well, that's fine, but there's a little saying right up in the top. You can't really see it. You could probably get it really close, but I'm going to tell you what it says. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about writing that plants it in the brain. Now, I've got a laptop here and I can, you know, cl click and type and all that kind of stuff and, on a tablet. And that's not bad. But they've proven scientifically that when you write something and you get a little instrument called a pen, I am so grateful to Anna Chapin for inviting me to Buckhead today and so forth. It plants it in your brain better. So people can say well, all this kind of stuff. You can talk. There, there was an app. Yeah, I'm grateful for this. And it'll type it. That's fine. Those are all good. But there's nothing like writing it. And the way this works, by the way, high five. How many have heard of a gratitude journal? By the way, just... Yeah, oh, yeah, most most everybody, yeah. And there's a long time ago when I started this, nobody had heard of a gratitude journal. And I will tell you, it's a very simple thing. Now, the way mine is set up here is it says on the left-hand side, you can't really see this, but I'll show you. Gratitude today, the day and the date. So today is Tuesday, August 25th. The daily number, we're going to come to that in a second. And then there's two lines that say current events, special occasion. And that's so you don't have to have a diary also. You can kind of keep track of what's going on. There's six or seven lines to write what you're grateful for. And then at the bottom is, is two lines that says the highlight of the day. And that in this case, if it's still early, it's 1030 my time, 130 your time. But that might be yesterday. Or if, it's, if you write in your journal at the end of the day, it might be from that day. And then on the right-hand side, is your gratitude intentions. And that's what you, where you write what you're going to be grateful for that hasn't even happened yet. 
And I will tell you that I don't go into a lot of detail on just, I'm just have, I just have an hour today, but and the whole concept here is to program your brain because your subconscious mind, which is in your prefrontal cortex does not understand the difference between what it thinks is going to happen and what actually happens. So I used to write in there. I'm so grateful. I'm speaking to hundreds of people when I got started. And then I spoke to 100 people. Then I said 500 people. Then I spoke to 500 people. And then I said, I'm speaking, I'm grateful. I'm speaking to thousands of people. And I had never spo spoken to a thousand people. Then I spoke at a convention that had a thousand people. And then 10,000 soldiers. And then I wrote, I'm grateful I'm reaching millions of people. And, and one of my videos hit a million views on YouTube. And I thought, man, I got through to a million people. So it's just programming your brain. So here's the exercise we're going to do because you don't have a gratitude journal in front of you. But so on that piece of paper, again, this is what I want you to do. And as I tell people too, this is one that you, there's a couple of times we share exercises when we're in person, but here you're on Zoom. So you're pretty much on your own. So you don't have to worry about somebody seeing this because the first thing I want you to do is I want you to write down somewhere on that piece of paper, your daily number. And this is what your daily number is. Your daily number is kind of taking your temperature. 10 is the best, one is the least. And that's what, how you feel right now. If you're a 10, you're having a phenomenal day, you're a 10. If it's one of the worst days ever, it's a one or a two. You can use halves. You could be a five, you could be so-so, you could be a seven and a half. Whatever your number is, write that number down and put a circle around it. Okay, then here's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna give you, let's see, let's do about 45 seconds. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down as many things you can think of in this order. What's the number one thing you're grateful for? And then write that down. And then what's the second most thing? If you only could pick two things and third and fourth, write down those as fast as you can, up to five to 10, the things you're most grateful for in your life. And the number and those things you're not going to share with anybody. So whatever you put down is fine with me. So I'll give you about 30, 40 seconds. Go ahead and do that. Go. Okay, stop that. All right, now here's what I want you to do. And again, when I do this in groups, the people are, I want them separate. I don't want anybody to look at what you're writing or saying or whatever. Now you wrote down that first number and then you wrote down number one, the thing you're most grateful for. If you only had one thing, only had two things and so forth. You wrote down five or 10 things. Just like before, I want you to read through those things. It should take you about 10 seconds to read them again. And after you, and really think about them. I'm so grateful for this and that and so forth and all the things you listed. And then at the bottom of the page, after reading those five to 10 things, I want you to write down another daily number. Could be the same, could have changed. But after reading those five to 10, write another daily number at the bottom and put a circle around it. Okay, so by, by high-fiving the number at the top and the number at the bottom, how many people's number stayed the same from the top to bottom? Okay. And then by show of hands, how many people's number went up from the top to the bottom? I can't see. Oh, and I, thank you. Oh, look at the thumbs up from Travis. Good job. I should have remembered that. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thumbs up, Jeannie, too. So five or six. So about four or five people went up and two or three stayed the same. So that gives you, that's my example of about a 60 second example of what focusing on what you're grateful will do for you. And when you're writing it down and when you look at things, now I never tell people what to write about because I want it to be their idea. But I will tell you, I write in this gratitude journal faithfully every day. This is already set up for Wednesday for tomorrow, but here's today, Tuesday, 825, I already written it, written in it. 
and I will tell you, I'm very passionate. You probably can't tell about this gratitude journal and how much it makes a difference and writing, why writing is so important. You had five or six people, their numbers went up just from doing that from 30 to 60 seconds. This takes five minutes to write in every single day, five minutes. So when I'm selling them, when I'm in person, I always have mine pretty close by and I'll sometimes make notes and I put on mine today, Buckhead Club Atlanta, you know, just to kind of, if I want to, when I go back and reread this and look at it later, so it kind of, oh yeah, that's when I did the talk in Atlanta, et cetera. So I'll be selling the gratitude journals and the books and this guy comes up to me one day, he goes, is this your journal? I mean, like your personal one? I go, yeah. He goes, can I look at it? And I said, sure. And he kind of, I go, don't look at it too closely, but you can, you can flip through it. And he, he kind of goes like this. He goes, wow, you write in this every day. And I go, did you, have you listened to the talk? Did you hear what I, of course, I, no, I just write in it occasionally because you know what? It makes me feel good occasionally. So I just write in it occasionally. Every time you saw how many people that went, the number went up, it makes a difference. Of course, I'm going to write in it every day, but that's what I talk about. You know, it's like, you got to practice what you preach. So, but I will tell you on a personal note, this has such an impact. My mother, when I was growing up, she did die of cancer, as I mentioned, but before that she was manic depressive and bipolar, they call it now. And she used to do something to me. I, she's been long gone since like 1977, so it's a long time, but it still to this day bothers me how manipulative this was. There was five of us and I was second born and she would call me and she would put her phone by her sleeping pills and she'd shake them like this and she'd go, you either come over and see me in a half hour or I'm gonna devour this whole bottle of sleeping pills and I'll be gone by the end of the day. And I, I just, you can't make up stuff like that. And I went, are you kidding me? So I'd go over and see her and talk to her. And then later she gets lithium and some things. And she kind of got straightened out with her uh, bipolar. But I got some of that depression from her. But I'll be damned if I was going to take some pills. And I was all about water and exercise and getting out, writing a gratitude journal and hanging out with positive people and getting enough sleep and eating the right food and taking vitamins and all those things. I just am a real believer in taking good care of yourself. And I don't drink and I don't smoke and I never did drugs, blah, blah, blah. But it made such a big difference. But one day I woke up and I was a two. So you can appreciate the number scale that we had there. And I had a talk I was doing that day. And I went, man, I was so depressed. And I went, this, this, what's the point? This life is just ridiculous. And so I thought, well, I guess you better practice what you preach. So I went to a Starbucks, took the journal, and of course, sat down, got a latte, wrote in the journal, and that bumped me up to about four or five. So I was better, but I wasn't the usual nine or 10 I am most every day, so occasionally an eight. And so then I went and did the talk. And it was a big chamber of commerce, 150 people, and then they, they line up. It's, it's very... It's just humbling to watch people line up to buy your books, you know, and I, and I just go, wow. I mean, it, it's, and I looked and there's a line of like 20 people and this gal comes up and she's crying and she says, can I hug you? And I said, sure. And she goes, you just changed my life. And, and this was quite a while ago, but I, I've heard that a lot since, but I had never heard that at that point. And I went, wow, I did. Why? So, well, the story you told, the gratitude, it was this, it was that. And so far, I want to buy two journals for my two sons. I want to buy one for me. And so it was really, really powerful. And so then I got done and, and I gave her a hug and, and she bought the books and other people did and they left. And about a half hour later, I go out and get in my car and I'm starting the car and I look in the rear view mirror and I look at myself and I realize I'm a nine now, maybe even a nine and a half, possibly even a 10. And I thought, goodness gracious. So you started out the day at a two, you wrote in the gratitude journal, you were a four or five. And then you spoke to these people, changed this person's life, sold a bunch of books, and everybody said that was great. And now you're a nine or a 10. No drinking, no drugs, no coping mechanisms. The problem with coping mechanisms, my wife died of a prescription pill overdose. Here's the problem with those things. They're destructive. And in the case of my wife, they're deadly. And she took too many and died. So all, I don't blame Dana, my wife. All people are doing are just trying to find a way to cope to try to get through some of this because life is this. We all know it. The, long, the older we are, it's a big roller coaster ride. Being up top is really cool. Being down is not cool. You want to be back up top again, but being back down is where you learn all the lessons. That's when you really learn about life and stuff. So it was just something that I thought, wow, look what that did. And that didn't use any artificial means to change me on that too. So, but I will tell you too, I mentioned people lining up and there's a long list of people or a long uh, line of people rather, and I'm signing journals and stuff. In case you ever thought I might get carried away, I do another chamber of commerce thing and then they, they put all the cards in the basket and let me give away a couple of books. And so they draw the card and the, the woman that gets, they, they pick her card. She comes up to the stage, I'm up on the stage and, and, and I, she goes, here you go. And I say, hey, congratulations. And I, I hand her the book. 
and there's probably 200 people there. And as she turns to walk away, I said, you know, later, if you'd like, I'll sign that for you. She looks back and goes, that's okay. I said, wow, you don't want me to sign it for you? Okay, that's fine. Never, never one to take, you know, that, to, to get the member to be humble, I guess is what I should say. Because you know what? We're all just trying to make an impact at some point. So, okay, next I want to talk about, I mentioned this earlier, find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. And I, I just so believe that the most important relationship you'll ever have with yourself. And I want to read something. I'm going to read this through this kind of fast, but uh, I actually mentioned it to Anna earlier about 12 ways to increase your self-esteem and confidence. I just, I don't really know. It's so amazing. We all know people who are extremely confident and we know people who are very insecure and sort of timid and not confident at all. And yet, if you're confident, if your number, like that daily number is an eight, nine, or 10, or your confidence is an eight, nine, or 10, everything in your world works better. It just does. It just works better. And so uh, here's, here's, and you can jot these down if you want. I'm going to go through these really fast because I only got about 10, 15 minutes. I want to get through some other stuff. Number one, exercise. You hear that over and over. There's a bunch of ones that were in the exercise. By the way, I put my, all my contact information in the chat too. Uh, for the gratitude journal or any of the other things you might need. Minimum of half hour a day when you look good, you feel good, and so forth. And it just is, everything works better when you have exercise. Number two, gratitude journal. We just talked about that. It's so powerful when you're focusing every day for five or six minutes on what you're grateful for. Help others. If you want to help yourself, help other people. So incredible. Find somebody that needs your help. Number four, do something you're afraid to do. And I put on here like bungee jumping, talking to a stranger. I did bungee jumping, skydiving, scuba diving, and I don't even like heights, but it'll increase your confidence when you go out and do something that you not really wanted to do. Do something fun. Give your, I love this word permission. Give yourself permission to just goof off occasionally, not always have to be working 80 hours a week or whatever. Watch yourself talk. This is very powerful. I have a focus on people's names. I can see everybody's Justin just joined us here. I can see Dale and Mike and Brianna and everybody. And I generally don't forget names. And in fact, one day I wrote down Anna's name and I, I mistakenly put C-H-A-S-E-N and I realized it was F-E-N. And I just, I like to get things right and I don't want to mess them up. So I'll say to people, you're really good with names. And they go, I'm terrible with names. And I go, well, you know what? You keep saying that, you'll be terrible with names forever. Just keep the, yet those two ears listening to one mouth. You just keep saying that. And you'll always be terrible with names. So think about the self-talk. Uh, it's so important. I have something too I think is really cool. I call it my heartwarming emails notebook. I get emails now all the time, notes, calls, voicemails, letters, cards, everything about how I change somebody's life. However you get those things, save those things. Those are a great thing to read on a tough day. I call it the heartwarming email is emails and notebook, whatever it might be. When your confidence is under attack, if you read that, if you look at those top 25 or 50 or 100 things you've done in your life that are the most memorable events, it'll shift your mindset. And that's what we're really interested in is making a change. Smell great. They've talked about for guys cologne, for women's perfume, something about smell makes a big deal. And what the images it puts in your brain, just like cotton candy at the fair when you're growing up, you can smell it and it just changes your mindset. Watch less TV. I love this one. You know, maybe an hour a day, but if your you know, TV ad, or watching goes down, your attitude goes up. Music is another one. Listen to music, whatever your famous uh, or favorite uh, music is. It creates positive images in our brain. Set goals. You've heard that over and over again. Set goals. You, you start out on a road trip. You have a map. When I'm flying, we have a flight plan. There's a reason we're going to get from A to B. We don't just go out and drive and hope we'll get there someday. So that's setting goals. And 12th and last, I really, really like this. Learn how to accept criticism. So you know, be, and always be sure to consider the source because we get criticized from people and we get all our feelings hurt and so forth. And gratitude and the mindset of focusing on what you have can give you this great Teflon or armor that protects you from life's barbs, if you will. And I will tell you in a second, I'm going to give you guys a thing you can text to sign up for my Monday morning minute. It's a one minute video I send out every single uh, Monday. And I, I write them ahead of time and then I film them and I put them out. It's always 60 seconds. It's another subject to get your week off to a right, uh, to a good start. And so I always, for the way it works is I'll film them and I'll put them in on Saturday to YouTube and maybe five or six people watch them. And then they go out on Monday morning and uh, it's, it's to my mailing list, about three or 4,000 people, I would say that are on that. 
And um, so I, I get, I've now I've got trolls. So I've got trolls that are like, you know, on me and they're, they're watching my YouTube stuff. So I have a lot of subscribers and I have over a thousand videos as you heard in the intro. And um, so yesterday I get one and he saw that on, and I do it for a reason because I don't want to get up early Sunday. I put it on Saturday and then it comes out Monday and he goes, it's Saturday, dumbass. And I just went, wow. <laughs> nice. Just trying to help people out here. Just trying to help you. But I realize it is, but if you wouldn't mind behind your, your name and the little avatar, it doesn't show who he is or her or whoever it might be. There's a reason for doing that, but it makes such a big difference. So, um, but this relationship that you have with yourself, if you increase your self-esteem, it's so critically important. It makes such a big difference. So I will tell you as an example, I was down in Reno and this is a long time ago when my buddy was at the slot machine. He was playing a quarter machine and I hear him screaming. He's about 10 feet away from me and he put a quarter and he won $1,000. So $1,000 with the quarters is a lot of quarters. And this is back when they still had the change stuff coming down. It was crashing and he's going like this and Brooker, can you believe it? And I came over and I stood by him. And I said, man, this is fantastic. And, and he goes, yeah, I'm buying dinner. This is great. And I'm just cheering with him and everything. And I'm looking at him and I'm realizing privately to myself, I'm very excited for him. His name was Rand. And, but then I realized that I would be just a little bit more excited if it was me that was winning the $1,000. And that's just how we relate to ourselves too. Now, not everybody's going to admit that, but I thought I was happy, but I would even be more excited if it was me. So understanding that relationship you have with yourself is so important. So three-part formula. Number one, get a great relationship with yourself. You write in the gratitude journal. You focus on the things you're great, grateful for. You focus on the, how somebody else sees you. You look at those top 50, 100 most memorable moments. All those things will lend you to a better relationship with yourself. The writing in the gratitude journal is a huge one. makes a big, big difference. But I will tell you that once you get that in place, the next thing is your passion. I'm very passionate about gratitude. You know, and, and how do you know what you're passionate about? You would do it for free. It was a thing you wanted to do when you grew up. It was what you always wanted to be, but you never did. It's something that's still, you know, it's never too late, which I think is part of it. But it's one of those things that you, you thought about that makes you happy. I get so much response from this talk that I do from small groups to large groups, to everything else in between. It's really driven me into what my passion is. And I had a buddy of mine writes a check once for a million dollars just a couple of years ago. And he hands me the check and he says, I could make this good if you want to take it. And I said, sure, Michael, what's the story? And he says, there's only one, one thing is if you take this check, you have to stop being that gratitude guy. And he says, would you do it? And I, I waited maybe a second and I said, no. And he goes, well, you found your passion then. And it's, I, I mean, I get to impact people's lives every single day and it's my passion. So you can figure out what your passion is. And I'll tell you, I was 62 years old, eight years ago when I started doing this. So it doesn't matter how old you are. John Hausman was 71 when he became an actor and then won an Academy Award for the paper chase. And Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started KFC and Sam Walton was 45 and Mary Kay Ash was 45 when they started their businesses. So it doesn't matter how old you are, but figure out what that passion is. And then my contention is that'll take you to what your purpose is. And if you wonder if people have found their purpose, think about this for a second. Think about people like Bear Bryant, who is a successful coach at the University of Alabama, won a bunch of championships. He retires and two months later, he passed away. Think about somebody like Joe Paterno who got in the scandal with that Sandusky guy and all the things that happened in Penn State. He was fired three months later. He passed away. Andy Rooney was on 60 Minutes. I think he went, I wonder if he's into his 90s, he went well into his very, very senior years. Finally quits three or four months later, passed away. That because that's how that passion relates to what you can do in your life. So, so very important. Find yourself, find your passion, and I think you'll probably find your purpose. And it makes such a big difference. So all right, so a couple more things and I'm gonna wrap up here in a few minutes. Um, I think it's so important if you wanna help yourself that you help others because people, it's all about what I'm trying to get across is how gratitude and a few key exercises and mindsets can change you to have you focus on your blessings and your abundance and not the things that you don't have in your life. And I mentioned something as far as helping yourself versus helping others. You ask yourself, what can I do today to make this a better place? You know, it's like you can volunteer at a food bank, you can go to your church, a homeless area, donate to your time and money to a worthy cause. Those are all things that you can do. So next exercise, 
Uh, somewhere on that piece of paper, I'll give you 30 seconds. I'll give you 20 seconds for this one. I want you to write down the name of three people, three persons, three people in your life that you will call and ask to give some sort of assistance. I don't care if it's just to say hi. I don't care if it's to send them a text that you, you're, just, you're thinking of them, but people that maybe, is there anything I can do for you? Especially with this coronavirus, write down the names of three people that you promised me you'll go approach and in some form contact them and see if you can help them. I'll give you 15 seconds for that. Okay. That will, you will be surprised how much better that will make you feel. It's very, very cool. So, okay. So here's a couple of things. Get your, you have your smartphones. Everybody grab your smartphones because I want you to do a couple of things if you would. If you don't have it, it's okay. But if you do, I'd like you to do a couple of things for me. First of all, write down this phone number, 206-371-8309. 206-371-8309. And that is my cell number. And just text me the number one thing that was on your list for being grateful for. Number one or number two, if it was personal or whatever. But what's the most thing, what was the thing you were the most grateful for? Text that to me. And I love to kind of see what everybody thinks in the audience and get a flavor, if you will. Okay, next, a couple more things, and then as I say, we'll wrap up about five minutes. I, get, I send out this Monday morning minute, and it's, as I say, 60 seconds long, and it just kind of starts you off your week, and I, I have three or 4,000 people on the mailing list, and if you would like to get that, you can do that very simply by doing this. Go to your phone, and you need to text this number in the, the number box for the phone number, 42828. You text into the, uh, or excuse me, put in the number box to, to send, 42828. And in the message box, type in the word grateful. So the number to text to is 42828. And the message in the message box is the word grateful, G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L. And it'll ask you for email and you'll be set up to get the Monday morning minute because people are always asking me, how do I get more gratitude in my life? And that's one good way you can start off your week with a good gratitude message about something. And I, gosh, I think I've done five or 600 of them or something like that. I've done a lot. And then also, as I mentioned too, on this gratitude journal in the chat, there is called the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I put a link in there. So that'll take you right to Amazon. You can get that as well. And then a couple more things, and then we're going to talk, we're going to wrap up on sharing gratitude. I'm always asking people too, when I do these talks about, I love to speak to audiences. And so if you know of anybody that works for a company or association that brings speakers in, please give them my information or please text me and let me know at david at thatgratitudeguy.com. And I just so appreciate it because I get so many referrals to other groups and companies that think that this, this information might be good for them. And, and again, if whether it's a small group or large group, it doesn't matter to me because I've done the 10,000 soldiers. I also went to a nursing home once where they forgot to, they paid me and they forgot to um, pr promote it. They didn't put a sign up or anything. There's just one guy. <laughs> so I just, why don't you just sit down? Just the two of us, you know, but can we get a couple of coffees here? Yep. It's just the two of them. I did my talk for him right at the table, just the two of us. So, and then the second thing is, is that, I do do a lot of coaching. And so you, if, you, if you or anybody you know is interested in being coached, let me know because I'll do a 45 to 60 minute complimentary consultation where I just kind of give more value and talk to people about how gratitude and the gratitude mindset can help you. And then, um, and just give somebody some immediate feedback. And then if they think it's something they might be interested, we can discuss going further, but at least I give an hour to people to just go through and show how taking a gratitude template and applied to your life can change your trajectory and so forth. And so again, if you, if that's you or you're interested in that, just David at that gratitude guy and I'll contact you and we can set something up. So, 
Okay, last thing I'm going to wrap up with is, is sharing gratitude. So we talked about these finding yourself, finding your passion, finding your purpose, and the gratitude journal and all that kind of thing. But sharing gratitude is something that's so important. So get your cell phones handy, if you would. And for those of you that aren't on the screen, hopefully you can do this as well. And we're going to share some gratitude. I call this the four T's, as in text, tweet, telephone, or tell. Those are the four T's. I will tell you that everybody text does the text. So I want you to, I'll give you 60 seconds, and this is the last exercise, and I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And please use the word grateful in the text. That's part of the exercise. So let's go. This is a pretty fast group. I'll give you 30 seconds to do that. Whoever you want, text them and let them know how grateful you are to have them in your life. Okay, and stop. And if you're not finished, you can text them later. I always try to gauge the audience. When I'm in a junior high school or a high school, I give everybody about uh, two, about 60 seconds. They've done about like eight or 10 texts. It's unbelievable. And then in the senior centers, it's, I have to go help people and they're kind of hunting and pecking and going through. We got to get that text out. But it is funny to me because again, in person, people would come up and they'd show me, look at my text. And they'd go, here's my phone. And they'd show me, and, and one of the texts that they sent to somebody to tell them how grateful they were in their life, they said, the text said, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I'm like, man, that's not the right idea. You're supposed to be grateful and supposed to be thankful. Another one said, are you sure you sent this to the right person? And I go, apparently. But one of the ones that was always, I'll never forget, it was a lady who was sitting in an auditorium. She was about 10 or 15 feet away from me on the, the stage and I could hear her. she was calling, which people do occasionally, but most of them text. And I hear her from the stage and she says, I'm grateful for you too, honey. And I just want to let you know, I'm so thankful. I'm assuming her husband. And she said grateful like two or three times, which was really cool. And I'm just so grateful. And I just, I appreciate, and I'm grateful. To, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> I went, Man, you missed the whole thing. It's supposed to be your idea. It's not some speaker. So anyway, that's, that's the kind of thing. That's what gratitude can do for you. So I will tell you, there's all these coping mechanisms out there. And everybody, we saw some of the ones on here, exercise and all these different things that people talked about. And I will tell you, a lot of them are healthy, a lot of them are destructive, and many of them are deadly. And we don't have to talk about the war on drugs and all these things. What are people doing with drugs? In my opinion, in so many cases, they're just looking for some relief. They're looking for something to get out of the pain of life or the stresses of life or whatever. Gratitude, a gratitude journal, a gratitude mindset will get you through anything and it'll do it without any harm to your physical or mental being. I cannot tell you how much gratitude's done for me. That's why I'm so passionate about these talks and doing as many as I do is because it can help you and it's so healthy for you. I think it can change your life. I think it can transform your life. I think it saved my life and it can do the same for you. So my last request is, is that you give it a try. So thank you for listening today. And that's it. If you have any questions, you know, you can, if you want, you can, you know, you know if, if you, you guys know that if you hit the space bar, it can unmute your account and do that. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll give you guys a minute or so, but, uh, but that's it. But thank you for being a great audience. I can always tell by the eye contact, people are paying attention and, you know, people aren't eating lunch and stuff on the side. So it's some of the things you see in Zoom are pretty funny. People brushing their hair, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to brush their teeth and they forget the cameras on. So Anyway, so any questions, anything else in the I, chat? I, I've got one, David. So yes, you Nance. Talking about the negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. Is there a tool we can use to stop that quickly? Get out of that negative, yeah. the negative Nancy part of me. 
Yeah, negative Nancy. Yeah, it's it's that's a great question, Nancy. The only thing that I can say is that, you know, they do those things like somebody that puts a rubber band around their thing and they snap the rubber band or something. Is the thing that I think about it is that if you ever plug your ears and you can't hear yourself talk, you get water in your ears, it's really weird. And they go, oh, this is weird. We're so used to talking and hearing ourselves hearing ourselves talk. Just be really aware of what you're saying and thinking about what you're saying because I notice people whenever I'm just so fascinated by when you're talking to somebody, people are always wanting to go bring it, put in, inject them into your conversation and start talking about themselves. And, and I've said before, I can be talking to Nance and Fred comes up and I, and, and goes, how's it going? And I said, Fred goes, how are you doing Nance? And Nance goes, great. I was, we just, my husband and I just got back from Hawaii and this guy barges in. We just went to Hawaii six months ago. In fact, we were there. We had, a, and I, we weren't talking about you. We were talking about you. We were talking about Nance. Can you let her finish before you ever say anything? So just really thinking about it and and just and especially maybe the, the best tip I could give you is just try to avoid the word never because that I never listen. I never on time. I never remember names. I never that's just not a good word. And and I will tell you one more tip. This is this is the the better way to do it. So this is a replacement. And I, I, I generally, again, I just don't forget names. And I, I don't care if I'm 70 years old. It doesn't matter to me. It's just, it's not a question of age. It's just it's focus. And so if I think, God, what was that gal's name? I think it was Nance um, down in Atlanta. But that's so funny because I'm usually so good with names. And look at the difference saying something like that as I'm thinking about your name versus I never remember names. So just, just really listening yourself talk, but just listening to yourself talk and being very aware of it. And you'll start to show, slowly shift away from that. So, yeah, because it, it's, it's brutal. It's just brutal. And, you, and, and you'll also notice it with other people all the time. You're talking about stuff and how many things, I'm terrible. And that's why I love that exercise, how your biggest cheerleader sees you. Because so many people, you say, I love your sweater. This old rag, I washed the car with it yesterday. This is nothing. And I call, can you just say thank you? That's all you have to say for a compliment. But you say, so I love your hair. Oh, I haven't even washed it today. I mean, what, what's the story? And I just go, <laughs> Just say thanks. Just say thanks. So just really listen, really listen carefully. It'd be amazing what you can hear. So anyway. Okay. Anything else, folks? Thank you. I see some thank yous. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much for being a great audience. As I said, even with Zoom, you can really tell who's focused and so forth. So, but uh, I appreciate it. So, and anything else, like you said, in the chat, you can get, uh, get a hold of me, David, at that gratitude guy, if you have anything else. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much, everybody. Take care.